Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to derive the equation we just saw in the previous video. How do you find the potential due to the presence of a point charge? And before we do that, before we show you how to do that, let's compare this to how we would find the work done by moving an object with mass through a gravitational field. So in other words, find the work done by the gravitational field by moving an object with mass m from the ground to some height where the height is equal to h. So again, we know that the small amount of work done to move from a, from a point to a very close by adjacent point, dy distance away, that's a small amount of work done that's equal to the force on the object due to gravity times the small displacement. And notice this is a dot product, so it's f dot dy. And since f dot dy can be written as the magnitude of f times the magnitude of dy times the cosine of the angle between them theta, we can now define work done as the integral of the dw's, which is the integral of f dy times the cosine of theta, integrated from the ground h equals 0 or y equals 0 to y equals h. Now we know that the force due to gravity is equal to the mass times the constant g, the acceleration due to gravity, so we have mg dy times the cosine of theta, and since m, g, and the cosine of theta are all constants, they can move outside the integral sign, so simply integral from 0 to h of dy. And remember that the angle cosine of theta, or the angle theta, is 180 degrees because the force of gravity is downward and the motion, the displacement, is upward, so that's a 180 degree angle. The cosine of 180 is minus 1, so we have minus mg times the integral of dy, which is y, from 0 to h, which is minus mgh. So the work done by the gravitational force as m moves from here to there is a minus mgh. The reason why I showed you this is because this way we can compare it to how we would do it for the potential due to a point charge because again we have to think about how exactly is that defined and do we have a negative or a positive, how do we deal with the signs there as well. So not to get confused, we can now have something to compare it to when we try to get the work done by the electric field by moving a small charge starting from r equals infinitely far away, where by definition the potential equals zero, to a point closer by at distance r away from the point charge. So again, we use the same concept that the small amount of work done, dw, by moving a charge from, let's say, this point right here to this point right there, that would be a small dr. There we go. And so that would be a vector quantity in this direction. And then notice that if the charge is right here, the electric field force on that charge there, since it's positive charge, would be in this direction because the electric field direction would emanate away from a positive charge. So the force is in this direction, and of course the force is equal to the strength of the field, E times the size of the charge, Q. Notice in this case also that the direction of the electric field is an opposite direction to the direction of the displacement. So again, we're going to end up with an angle, theta, which is 180 degrees. So the small amount of dw is equal to, by definition, the force due to the electric field times the displacement, dr. And the force due to the electric field is going to be equal to, well, let's write it like this. This is F dr times the cosine of theta. And the force, this should be an R right there. And the force is going to be the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of the charge times dr times the, oop, got a little ahead of myself, times the cosine of theta. There we go. Now we're ready to find the work done to go from a point infinitely far away to a point closer by. So the work done is equal to the integral of all the dw's, and we go from infinitely far away to the distance r. And that's going to be equal to the integral from infinity to r of e q dr cosine of theta. The difference here is that the electric field strength here is not constant. The gravitational field here was constant, so therefore the force due to gravity is a constant mg, but that's not the case here because the electric field here of a point charge is a function of 1 over the distance squared. So we have to make sure we take that into account. So q moves over here, cosine of theta moves over here, so this can be written as 
the integral of, uh, let's see, I need a little bit more room. Let's see, we'll take the Q out, so we have the Q times the cosine of theta times the integral from infinity to R of the electric field strength, which would be K Q divided by R squared, so let me just put the R in like that, times dr, there we go. And now what we see there is that k and q, well they're constants as well, so they can move outside the integral sign, so the amount of work done is equal to the small charge q times the cosine of 180 degrees times k times the charge q that causes the electric field times the integral from infinity to r of 1 over r squared times dr, and this should be a 2. There we go. That looks a little bit more like a 2. Okay, now we're ready to integrate. So this is equal to, we have a minus q, because the cosine of 180 is minus, minus q, k, big Q, times a negative 1 over r, evaluated from infinity to r. So this negative cancels out this negative, so this is equal to Q, K, big Q, times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 over R, minus when we plug in the lower limit, we get 1 over infinity. And of course, 1 over infinity, that is equal to 0, so this disappears, and we're left with 1 over R times this, so we know that the work done to move a charge from infinitely far away to a location distance r away from the charge that causes the electric field is equal to, that would be q k big Q divided by r. Now, finally, we go back to our definition. We know that the voltage is equal to the work done divided by the size of the charge. So the work done to move a small test charge from one location to another the reason why we don't have to write delta V here is because we know that voltage is zero when we start and we end up with some volts when we finish. So the volt that we end up with over here is going to be equal to the work done to move the charge from there, oh, from there to here divided by the size of the charge. We've got the equation for the work done, now we need to divide that by Q. So now we can say that V is equal to the work done, which is Q K big Q divided by R, and the whole thing divided by little q, the little q's cancel out, and the potential at that location therefore is K Q divided by R. And that was the equation we showed you on the previous video, but here we can show you why that's the correct equation for the potential at any distance R away from a point charge. The same kind of technique used that we used to find the work done by the gravitational force, here it's the work done by moving a small charge, it's the work done by the electric field by moving a small charge from infinity to the point R away from the point charge. And that's how it's done.